Very good morning to you. Uh, many thanks for coming to this uh, parallel session. Um, in the conference this morning, um, and I have to say, our colleague Linda uh, Matisani, she organized that with her whole team in a very brilliant way. In the conference this morning, we had four presentations about new ways of conveying the message. We come now in one of the two parallel sessions um, where we will discuss about applications, about how to do it. And there's no need that I, Jean-Michel Miller, research manager from the European Foundation, and I have the honor to monitor this um, parallel session. There's no need to remind you about the importance about the awareness and the training. You know that six weeks ago, here in Riga, we presented, Eurofound presented the findings of its European company uh, survey, where we have the results that 13% of the establishments have no training at all for the employees. Hence the importance of campaigns of awareness raising um, in general. We will have two presentations here now in this session. One presentation from our host country, Latvia, a recent member in the European Union, and a presentation from Sweden, a country with a long-standing history of good working life and social uh, partnership. The first presentation uh, will be by our friend Ivas Vanetsins. Eva is director of um, the health and environmental health safety and environmental health institute here in Latvia. He is in the institute over 15 years and he was in somehow predestined for that job because his doctoral thesis was about workplace risks in the woodworking industry. I understand on a personal level in order to have a good anti-stress um, uh, life, he is looking forward for a good work and uh, a private life balance and he is very much so in uh, physical activity, so it could well be that this morning he cycled, walked to um, here at the conference. His presentation will be about the development of OSH videos here in Latvia, from one example to a policy for videos in general. Ivas, the floor is yours. The chairman, uh, dear colleagues, uh, it, is, it is indeed a pleasure to be, be here and speak on uh, such an event that's uh, held in Riga. Uh, as, um, as you see from the title of the, of the presentation, the program, uh, we're going to speak about um, how, it all, well, how it all started from one uh, company example to a sort of uh, national approach, if I may say uh, such a loud uh, words. Um, I will um, talk, um, don't worry, I will, don't, I will not talk too long. Uh, half of my presentation are actually videos, so don't be, don't be worried about that, but still a few things I want to say. Uh, I have structured the presentation um, in a following manner that uh, I will say a few words how it all started. Uh, then I will just say what do, how, how are we doing at the moment, um, how we are working to make the films more available and more popular, and what are the uh, plans for the future. Uh, very, very briefly, uh, in the introductory part, um, 
Um, I, I think it's clear to everybody in the audience that uh, the video is, um, as we heard in the morning, is a safe bet. And uh, it's clear that uh, the training and awareness needs a new approach and new materials because I think everybody is tired of reading uh, this size of manuals on the paper. So uh, we, we're also watching it in our uh, surveys and our studies and our um, results from the uh, questionnaires uh, during the seminars that uh, both the employers and the employees, they, they look for new ways. They look for something attractive, something easy to use, something free of charge and etc. And then, uh, coincident, uh, that was a nice coincidence that uh, at the 2012 there was a good practice award uh, we called Golden Helmet. That's a good practice award uh, among companies in our country. And it was uh, won by Statoil, Statoil Stato Fuel, Fuel and Retail Latvia. Uh, in, uh, sorry, you're locked in. <laughs> I was going to say we're all locked in <laughs> until the coffee break. So the, the, uh, that, uh, yeah, I, I apologize for this, but uh, that's the way it is. Um, uh, it was won in 2012 by a company called Statoil. I think uh, quite a few of uh, you know what it is. Um, and that's a company actually having a lot of employees across the uh, whole country, and not, o not only Latvia, of course, but also in other countries. And th what they did actually, that's the slide uh, showing that the uh, golden uh, um, helmet is being awarded to Statoil Fuel and Retail Latvia. And what they did, they did actually a very simple thing. And uh, it uh, sort of inspired us to do more thinking about it. And I will show you the first of these uh, films at the moment. Um, that's a film um, uh, about uh, the idea what they did. They actually did, uh, uh, they did, um, they asked the fuel stations to make the videos themselves. So, I hope uh, the translation will come. So you can see that um, the, what, the, what they did actually asked uh, all of the gas station teams uh, each to make a training video on one of the numerous uh, safety instructions that they have. And I think they have about 50 or 60 or something like that of these uh, paper forms of uh, instructions. So they did a very simple, simple thing. They asked, uh, okay, can you do it in a video? by your own, uh, uh, own sort of uh, power and all, all your own technique. So it was done and it got the uh, uh, award. So we started to think if there is one company already doing something like that, there should be more. And it, it ended up with uh, what we think is a really good idea. And I, I ask um, you to consider this uh, in your countries. We ended up with uh, what we call the film afternoons. We make a, make a real cinema uh, afternoon with a real cinema sort of um, approach that you can get uh, co coke and uh, popcorn. I know it's not healthy, but still. 
so we invited people to come and to see the OSH videos that are av available with the hope that they will spread the word. And it became very popular. Actually, I will show you later on about uh, these film afternoons. And um, that first uh, afternoon was in 2012, uh, end of uh, 2012. And it actually, uh, we, we asked the local companies, uh, uh, do they have any videos available? And we ended up with quite a good program for almost uh, two, uh, one and a half hours, almost two hours. And I'm happy to say that also the store Enzo film was there, actually, one of the films that we showed. But also many, many others, like from the companies, Semex, uh, NCC, Ruki, uh, names a few of you might um, uh, might recognize and we also started to think that it's a good idea that maybe we should take the uh, successful materials that are available on paper and work a story, work a video story around uh, this and what we did actually we, uh, we had a sort of very small information uh, brochure so, this, uh, so that you can put it in your, in your pocket um, that was uh, called your OSH handbook or your OSH uh, guidebook and what we did, we, we turned it into animation film and it, I will show you a one minute uh, fragment out of this uh, just that you have an idea. Uh, it's uh, by far the most popular material on the YouTube at the moment and it's also available in uh, Russian, uh, English and Lithuanian languages and, and this one is in English as you can see. Mm. So it goes, goes on like that for um, about uh, eight and a half minutes and the idea of, uh, is, of this material is that it actually states 29 or 30 was it uh, most important requirements at the workplace that you should uh, follow like starting with a, a labor contract, uh, training and uh, all these uh, important issues. So uh, we find out that it's a very effective tool and after realization of, of uh, this um, uh, we, we just started to think okay that's nice but how do we get uh, the films because we all know that making a video could be quite expensive actually and uh, we were at that time and we still are on the very limited budget so we have to plan very carefully how do we spend the money we actually have. So what have we done? We have tried three different approaches. The first is adaptation of uh, suitable OSH films that uh, are produced uh, almost daily all, all around the world and there are hundreds and hundreds of them. I will tell a bit more of that. Then a uh, good idea that we have developed here and we have tried it several times, works really nice, is getting the companies involved uh, in preparation of uh, these materials. I will tell a bit more about that. And then of course we can uh, make an open tender for the companies that want um, uh, to participate uh, on the topics that we choose as an important ones. Uh, about the adaptation of films, that has been a good experience, uh, but there are of course some considerations and uh, I've listed the most important ones here. And I think the first, uh, the real problem is to find a good film actually, to find a suitable film. I've been watching I think hundreds of them, but uh, when, when you have to end up with a, a tree you really want and tree that will be in cu cultural context and uh, will be uh, in according with our workplace demands, it's not so easy actually. And there are of course many other things uh, like copyright issues and many, many other uh, issues that you have to solve if you want to find... Uh, Ja jūs vēlaties atrašāt filmu, 
or they could be very cheap. You pay only for the adaptation. In our case, it's about five, six hundred euros uh, per film. And I want to show you one example here. Uh, that's an example uh, itself interesting because it's made by the. Uh, uh, out of the primary function is to protect uh, from the elements and falling objects. Simply, it's something that protects you from snow and rain. That way, you can protect the highest part of the building. Be aware of the gravitational force. And uh, the surface can be affected by the elements, the rain, the sun. And it can affect your perspective and vision. You need to acknowledge higher safety arrangements. You can't drop anything from the roof. You can't overstep the barriers to avoid the fall. You always have to wear safety harnesses and check these safety harnesses for any misplacement. You need to be sure that you cannot slip on the roof and the weather is not the weather is good and the climate is nice and you can't fall over because of misplaced instruments and tools. So, you, you need to work on the roof safely, but you need to take into consideration the safety requirements while you're doing that. Uh, such a short and uh, rather funny film with some humor uh, could be effectively used for uh, training of construction workers. And this is a good example. It's uh, made uh, in Estonia by a consortium uh, led by the YIT, the Finnish uh, construction company, and supported by, I think, 50 or 60 different Estonian uh, companies. Uh, the other idea that we have is to get companies involved. And uh, what do we do? We actually um, um, sort of start a competition among companies that are interested to make their own videos, and we offer them co-financing. Uh, only two conditions apply. It has to be freely available and it has to be in line with the OSH requirements. So it has to be teaching the right message. And we had, a comp uh, we had two uh, rounds of such a competition in 2013 and 2014. Uh, last year, for example, we had 12 companies applying. Uh, three companies were actually supported and each of them made a good film. Uh, and it only cost us about one and, one and a half thousand euros roughly. And I will show you one example from the Ventspils, a town uh, in, um, uh, in Latvia, uh, doing, uh, getting, being involved in oil, uh, oil transportation. Stress of work. Mm -hmm.
So you can see that planning can be helpful in uh, reducing of uh, workplace stress. So this is the, another example. And then, of course, we have these uh, o o special tenders for the ideas that we are interested in. And, uh, uh, for example, last year we had uh, two films uh, that we were interested in. Uh, one was uh, for the health and safety of school teachers. And the other one was uh, accident, uh, a film about the accidents uh, at workplaces, uh, uh, all these simple things that you can actually prevent very, very easily. Uh, these then are, of course, more expensive, and uh, I think even that price was very, very low for the market. Normally, they would cost uh, much more than that. Okay, but then the last thing I want to tell uh, of our national approach that we have it uh, today uh, um, uh, is uh, the distribution of the video, OSH videos. Uh, it is a challenge, uh, of course, because they have to be freely available from one, ha on, sort of from one point of view, but then, of course, we are also interested in to seeing who is watching them and how many times they have been watched. And, of course, there are uh, many other issues, like how to uh, follow the copyright uh, and how to make them usable, because sometimes the video files are so huge that you, have really, you cannot really use it because it's just too big. Too big. We have tried several things. So the first is the traditional approach. That's the YouTube account of the State Labor Inspectorate. We have decided to have only one YouTube account, and all the videos that have been ever made about OSH uh, should be there. Uh, we have about 50 now there, 50 different video materials there, and it's uh, roughly watched about 1,000 uh, times uh, uh, every month. So for our size, it's quite okay. Then the interesting, uh, the innovative approach is the, are these OSH film afternoons. It's actually the third year we are making them. We had five film afternoons this year in January, February. Uh, about 400 people actually attended. That's a quite a good number. 400 people attended. They were in Riga in, and in uh, four uh, towns across, uh, uh, across Latvia. Uh, this is the, yeah, it's very dark because it's cinema after all. But it's a, a picture from the first um, film afternoon in Riga in January this year where we showed all the films that were made during the year 2014. And then uh, and a new thing we just started, and it works quite fine, uh, quite okay, is the free downloads of these uh, video files. We put the uh, files in the maximum uh, quality at this uh, website, and you can download them. So basically, that's usually the problem, because the, for the YouTube, you need an internet uh, signal. And sometimes that's a bit of a problem, especially for the big uh, YouTube files. And you cannot download it from the YouTube, or well, most people cannot. And uh, it has been working quite fi uh, nice. It's a file exchange server. Um, so uh, I think within one month, we had uh, more than 1,000 downloads uh, without any, uh, any promoting of uh, such an opportunity. So it worked quite fine. And then the last thing I want to say that we have been active uh, in making more videos is uh, uh, the preparation of video lectures from the seminars we have. Uh, it started uh, just a year and a half ago. Basically, any seminar uh, we have in Riga, we make it uh, also available as a video file. Uh, you can watch it afterwards on the YouTube account. And uh, the idea is we, we want to get more views. And for example, the seminar on workplace health promotion we had a year ago, uh, 145 persons in present, more than 300 persons watched it uh, uh, live on the YouTube uh, so far. And, uh, so finally, uh, the last thing I want to say before I conclude is that uh, the good news is that this uh, approach has been spreading and I know of quite few companies that are actually making videos as part of their daily training and I, I know we will hear examples from the Sweden, but uh, there are plenty com of companies including the Stuttle I mentioned earlier that are also doing this uh, video training on a regular basis. And we also have some OSHA experts specializing in just that. The only thing they do, they make safety training videos for the companies. And uh, my conclusions here is that, uh, uh, well, just like we heard in the morning, uh, effective and interesting OSH video is a really, really effective tool. If you show it in the right time to the right people, it really can reach an audience. And uh, it's also very cost effective, uh, especially if you involve these um, new ways how to get these video uh, materials available to the broader audience. So it could be very, very cost effective and it could reach really good numbers of views. In our case, we have about uh, one to one and a half thousand views per month, uh, which is for our uh, size of country very, very good. I thank you for your attention.
Many thanks, uh, Ivas, um, for your presentation. Yesterday, someone said it should be interesting and entertaining. And at least in the surroundings where I have been sitting this morning, people had at several occasions a smile. So it was certainly entertaining and interesting. Many thanks for that, um, uh, Ivas. We are coming now to the next presentation before coming to the discussion later on. We take the two presentations. It's our friend Manfred Meyer from uh, Sweden. Manfred is director of safety. He has been over 20 years working as a safety responsible person in several chemical and uh, biochemical uh, industries and has been about 10 years as well researcher uh, on the topic. Um, asked what is his recipe in order to manage or to prevent stress. He has a recipe with which I can identify myself with because I try to use it myself. It is to say, to work in the garden and see how plants develop. Um, Manfred will present us several videos from uh, companies in Sweden about how to favorize the safety training culture. Manfred, the floor is yours. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It's a privilege to be um, here as one of the few representatives from, from industry. So, so what I will do today is to provide you with an insight in how we as a company, as Stora Enso as a company, uses videos. Uh, there are many different ways that we can use videos and I'll provide you with two examples on videos that we actively use in our business. Um, so, so let's see, where are we? We're there. So first of all, um, short description of, of Storenzo. It's a traditional pulp, paper and wood company based in northern Scandinavia, headquartered in Stockholm and in Helsinki, but with a global reach. Uh, we're truly a global player in this market, not the biggest, but one of many. Uh, with this, well, a significant size and representation throughout Europe. So, so uh, this is about the size, and, and uh, you may know that the, the the paper industry is going through transformation. The fact that we're not getting any copied handouts from these conferences is, is a sign that this business is changing. So, so if you look at Storen, so uh, we're not unique in the sense that we worked with safety for many, many years. We do have well and mature, well developed and matured uh, safety management systems. Uh, we do a lot of training, we take safety really seriously, we have technical safety systems as you would expect from, from heavy industry. And we're truly heavy industry and you will see that in, in one of the videos. But the last couple of years development in our safety records has been too slow. We do have much greater ambitions and we want to reach the really low levels of accident frequencies. But somehow it's not going fast enough. And we, when looking at this, we realize that even though we have these fantastic systems, we do training, people understand we don't see the right behaviors. So the next step in our progress is actually working with safety cultures, uh, with, with safety cultures as HEMA. The model that we're using uh, we, have, we have borrowed, uh, the model is used, uh, that we, the, the model is, is the Bradley curve, the, the Pont Bradley curve, which is just one way of explaining the development of 
uh, a culture, safety culture in a company, going from your left-hand side being very reactive to what happens, going through following rules, and then ending on the lower right-hand side with a, a culture where we care about ourselves and each other. It's a fairly simple model, but it's you know, very easy to communicate. So, and the slope of the curve is actually the progression of the, the safety incidents or the accidents. So that's what we want to achieve. Uh, and how do we then move this curve? Well, videos is one of the tools. Um, and, and we like videos because it provides easy access. You, you only need a laptop and a Wi-Fi connection and a screen. And sometimes the laptop screen is enough. And we do have Wi-Fi all across our businesses, more or less worldwide. So access is not the issue. It needs to be short, it needs to be sweet, and it needs to provoke employees to you know, provide uh, an opportunity for discussion. It also has the advantage of not requiring a lot of preparation for the one leading the discussion. That, that the video should be, you know, a start from, no, it should take five seconds to start it. I'll see if I manage to start it within five seconds when I show it to you later. Um, it also provides us in the corporate centers to select themes, to get the coherent message across. And there is a program in the company at the moment with themes that we have planned. Uh, so this is what we need to do going forward. These are the themes uh, that relate back to what we see in our business. As an example, currently there is a film produced on hand safety because we have too many accidents involving hands. So that's how we can respond. Yes, it's going to be a slight delay. It will take a couple of months, but we will have a safety video on hands that we can use going forward, and that video will probably last a couple of years. It also provides us to, to build the safety brand, if you like. It you, you, everyone sees them. They, we start to talk about the same thing. Safety starts to mean some, something, and, and you will see the this, this, this slogan, uh, rethink safety. Uh, so what we want to do is, is the next steps, and, and that's already been spoken about previously, produce local videos uh, by the teams. We have got you know, this fantastic resource in our business uh, that is people. People that do this produce videos at home with their children, with their families, etc. Why not use that skill in the workplace? Technical, you know, technically these can be challenging to spread, but locally they can be used. So, so with that as an introduction, please allow me to show you one of them. It's been around for quite some time. I do a lot of safety training in my role for all levels in the business. And the first is my standard video that I use, more or less irrespective of the theme of the training. And this is you know, a, a video that could, you, know, you could ask yourself the following questions. Uh, what do you feel? Because we want to touch the minds of people, but also their hearts. How do you feel when you look at this? Does this seem scary? Or, you know, and have that discussion in place. Uh, could this happen in our facility? What are we doing to prevent this from happening here? Uh, or do we... You know, what do we do, need to do more, etc. And this is what, what the discussion should be all about. And the last bullet you can see there, what behaviors is it that we need to work on locally? What do we do with this?
stakes are high because it's not only one man's game. Safety always involves others and their well-being. A gambler who relies on luck may not even notice how the game sucks him in one deal at a time. He only wakes up when his safety or one of his mates is on the line, if at all. Sure, you can get quick wins, but you can just as easily lose the whole lot. You will have these, this video on your memory sticks. It, it goes on for a couple of minutes. So, so the message here is we have all these rules in the company uh, and people have been trained on the rules and we need to have a discussion if things like this happen in our company, why do they happen? What is it that we need to do more 
for people to start behaving right? Uh, what is it that pay, why people miss out on following the rules? And you have this discussion. And, and no, believe you me, they can be really heated discussions. And those emotions is that we really want to, to get to and, and shape that culture within the teams. What are we doing to prevent things like the ones, the, the, the actions that we see in these fields. So it's, it's a really powerful tool to use. Films like these are translated in all our languages, so they're used globally. So we, we have this, this text and the narrator in, I think, 11 languages that can be used across the globe, centrally produced. And we're talking about cost before. Yes, there's, there, there are more cost than the ones that, that we saw previously, because it's, it's, it's not it's scripted, it's actors. And not to you know, talk about the standstill cost, planning a video like this in, in a paper industry is a major undertaking. So, so, but, but it's worth it. And this, this video has been around now for three or four years, and it's still being used on a daily basis. So this is one example of a video that is used. Um, the next one is another type of video. Uh, it's a shorter one. Um, we have developed a series of shorter ones to uh, you be used um, to, to increase awareness, uh, making people alert and also to use for retraining. So reminding people of, you know, you've been trained on this, then, then you know, look at it and we'll have a short discussion. And this, these very short ones are very good to use in, in, in the daily context. Every employee in Storenzo should have a daily safety brief in his or her team. Uh, and these are fantastic starters for that. So in a shift handover, uh, shift going starting in the morning, they have a shift uh, safety dialogue. And that can be used in front of a TV screen with someone with a laptop and, and, and connection. Sanna, tuota, nyt on yhdeksän vuotta Sturaansossa täytteen välissä. Ja tuota, on nyt täällä Kuitunidalla työskentelen osastoinsinöörinä. Olin aikaisemmin tässä neljä vuotta vuoropäällikkönä. Siirryin tuossa tämän vuoden vuoden vaihteessa päivätöihin. Joo, minä olen Peeri Tasurinen ja ö, toimin täällä Enosellisen tehtävän työsuhteenpäällikkönä. Olen tehnyt sitä jo 14 vuotta. Tämä loukkaantunut ja hänen työkaverinsa olivat tulossa tehasosastolta ja heille piti olla palaveri tässä huoneessa, missä tämä tapaus sattui. Ja hän kertoi minulle tässä matkalla, kun oltiin menossa käytävää pitkin ja hissillä alas, että tuota, kaveri on kaatunut ja lyönyt päänsä. Ja minä sitten tietysti siinä mielessäni ajattelin, että no se pitää paikata se, paikata se haava ja menomatkalla siitä jo otettiin ensi joku kaavista niin haavanhoitotarvikkeita. Mutta sitten kun päästiin tähän paikalle, niin me huomasimme, että, että tuota, niin siinä oli jo elvytys aloitettu. Eli siinä oli tullut muita ihmisiä paikalle, jotka osasivat elvytää ja siinä oli elvytys menossa. Ja toinen ihminen oli sitten puhelimessa hätäkeskukseen. Ja sen verran se minuakin siinä hämäsi, kun ihminen yritti hengittää sen, sen takia, kun häntä elvytettiin. Hän ei niin oikeasti itse hengittänyt. Ja minä luulin, että, että se hän hengittää. Että käännetään kylkiasentoon. Niin ei siis mennyt kuin sekunteja, kun kaverille alkaa mennä naama siniseksi. Ja sillä toisella kaverilla oli onneksi pokkaa sitten sanoa mulle ensiapuuryhmällä sille, että ei se hengitä. Ja sillä mä se minäkin niinku havahdin, no ei se hengitä, kun se menee siniseksi. Käännettiin takaisin selälleen ja jatkettiin elvytystä siinä vaiheessa mennä sitten hokkaa. Muistin onneksi se hoksa sille, että tarvittaa se defibrillaattori. Ja tämä kaveri, joka minut kävi tätä yläkerrasta hakemassa, niin lähti, lähti juoksemaan sitä hakemaan sinne. Niin, niin yksi heistä oli aikaisemmin ollut elvytyksessä mukana, niin tuli niinku minun kaveriksi siihen. Se oli oikeastaan heti ehkä se ensimmäinen. So you see another type of video, 
And the background to this one is that we trained about 20,000 people on the use of defibrillators. We have defibrillators everywhere in all our sites. And this is a way to keep people alert and aware of the use of defibrillators after that training. So if we spend that you know, money on investing in people's training on defibrillators, making a video like this uh, is, is really part of that whole story. And as you can see from the quality of it and the type of video, it's cheaper to make, uh, it's quicker to do, and again, it's translated into all major languages in our business. So, so uh, this goes on for a bit, you have it on your sticks. Uh, and again, it's also a training you know, reminder video because you see all the, the, the major, major activities that you do when you want to, uh, uh, when you have someone with, with an issue. So, in summary, videos must be easy to use. They need to be relevant, of course, uh, to, to provoke that discussion. Uh, and you now we find that people start using all sorts of resources other than our videos because they get, get so uh, used to having the message coming across in, 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 in some emotion, no, in, in, in video format. So, people are looking for good videos on YouTube, on Google, whatever. Some of them are crazy. Uh, really s funny stuff and, and you know, sometimes funny and crazy at the same time, which is, is interesting. And, and they provoke that, those discussions. So it can be fun. And we've seen you, the use of, of uh, YouTubes, etc. Um, and as I said, the next step for us is to find ways to create you know, good quality videos uh, with, together with our people. Um, We'll see how we do that. It already exists, but it's, as you may understand, quality is an issue, translation is an issue, etc. But we can, we can promote that locally. So, so it's a fantastic tool, and as a safety leader, I really enjoy and like this channel as well as the traditional way of training and conveying messages. Thank you. Thank you, Manfred. And um, Manfred already mm -hmm. drew the attention to this memory stick, uh, which I would, all of us, like to use later on because we can learn from it. You know, certainly your videos which you presented have been very striking uh, examples. Before the conference, we asked the various speakers about a quote on health and safety. And Manfred did say that the absence of accidents does not automatically mean the presence of safety. How true. In the same direction went Eva in his quote, and the two of them presented the quotes independently. His quote is, good health good business. Indeed, we need healthy workplaces in order to make a good business. Now, I believe uh, the presentations have about how to promote videos, how to get new tools of dissemination going, and what to present in the videos. I'm sure we have about uh, yeah, a little bit less than 10 minutes uh, time that you have a question. The floor is all yours, knowing that you may express yourself in Latvia. Please. Uh, two okay. demands, we take, we take uh, two questions together. Yeah. And then uh, Thank you. I have a question to both uh, promoters. Uh, do you? Uh, uh, my name is Michael Koch from the German Ministry for Labour and uh, Social Affairs. Uh, I have a question. Do you have uh, any sort of evaluation or experience what sort of films uh, works better? Um, the sort with very realistic uh, accidents with uh, some blood uh, or are it, uh, the films, uh, to let me say, trick films with some humor? What, what is your experience?
Wat ben je? Hallo, Aarts Veldinch. Latvian Wood Industry Association. I would like to give a question to the Manfred. What would you tell about uh, tell about this book? This book is uh, given in the schools in uh, Sweden. What do you think? Uh, ca could we uh, could we use this as a preventive? material on uh, work safety. The question to the audition, do you, th do you know that this conference will be uh, sent out uh, the information in uh, several different levels in uh, your uh, countries? Do you know that? About the, about the teaching process, is your 155th convention precludes that you need to teach work safety in all level education institutions, and this is being signed by all the member states. What is the problem? The problem could be that in some conferences, we should discuss this problem. Thank you. Many thanks. Uh, uh, I don't know what, well it works. Many thanks for, uh, for your questions. Just to say that our friend Zana, she will do later on uh, a report about our discussions which we have had and obviously the questions which we, we have had which will be going into the report of this conference, which will be published uh, on, on the website. So we try to do what we have been asked in the, uh, in the new strategic framework, contribute to the dissemination of good practice. So that is a link at, as well between what is set on the European level and the practice level um, uh, in the companies uh, on the floor level. I give the floor to the two of you, I believe, um, uh, because the questions have been addressed to you, please. I can take the easy one, maybe, the one which what works best. Uh, of course, we do follow what's been watched uh, more than, uh, than others, other films, and the answer is very simple. The blood is always nice, always help, and the animations are always watched more than any other films, so that's a very, very short answer to that. And then the good, the good one goes to you. <laughs> Could you summarize the, the question? Because I didn't have a translator phone on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, question, the, 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 the question was, but, well, uh, it's always best when the author is summarizing, but uh, the question was basically about the booklet which he yep. showed up, mm. uh, where I couldn't detect the title, you know, but uh, asking whether that would be a good tool and uh, why the recommendations, the number of which I have forgotten now, is not followed on the, uh, on the national level, and thirdly, whether the, uh, uh, the findings of this uh, seminar would be uh, disseminated. And I, I answered on the last point. Okay. So um. I can't, I can't really uh, respond for, for, for Sweden as a whole. <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, there, there's a lot of good things around in Sweden and in other countries that we as companies can, can lean towards uh, getting inspiration. Um, from from um, the, the book I understand, it's, it's a book that wasn't published yesterday, so it's probably something that is worked on uh, since that was published. And, and I think we have representatives from Sweden that, that could probably respond better. Um, on, on the question on what works best, um, yes, there is a bit of blood. Um, that's about provoking emotions. I'm pretty sure we could do it without the blood, but this, these uh, accidents or near misses are realistic. They can, ha can happen, and that's kind of the emotion. I don't have a good, uh, I don't have, don't have good experience with, with the cartoons. 
I, I, I like uh, the discussions that are realistic. You, we've tried it, but it hasn't failed, and they don't live over time. A video like the ones that we saw here are people see them for the fourth time and they discover new things. A cartoon is more you know, two-dimensional or one-dimensional. So that's, that's my experience. Thank you. Thank you, Manfred, Eva. Uh, would there be any other question when I look into the room? If not, I would like to, to thank first here our two presenters. I would like to thank Sana for uh, doing all the work for the follow-up. And in particular, I would like to thank you as participants and as participants as a multiplier and this is what we have been asked to do. It is to say, to help to disseminate good practice, to help to use new tools which facilitate to bring the message to people. And in this dissemination process and production process of new tools, we need, as it has been said yesterday in the panel discussions, the involvement, the participation. This means as well that in the creation of the films, those who are in charge get involved and get asked, you know, what are the elements you would like to advance? What do you see on a daily basis and what we can see and produce uh, in the film? Having said so, I believe we all deserve a good coffee. The coffee is outside, and if you don't want coffee, I'm sure that there is an orange juice there as well. Many thanks for your attention.